I know so many of you really want to know how can we advocate better on behalf of Israel? How can we be a better voice for Israel uh, in uh, social networks and in our communities? And I can't think of a better person to help us uh, understand those questions. So let's talk about your background for a minute. Um, you've been uh, on social network uh, for many years. I believe it started when you were in the army, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, right? You've yeah. Yeah, I, I started, it was during the Gaza War of 2014. I was in the armor corps in the Israeli army. I was frontline inside the Gaza Strip fighting Hamas. And whenever we would come back to Israel, you know, I would open the news and I saw a lot of uh, pro-Palestine rallies, anti-Israel, Israel is bashed for uh, committing crimes against uh, humanity, war crimes. And I was there. I was there on the ground. So I saw that it was blunt lies. So I decided that if I... Uh, blunt lies because you were actually fighting in a very pinpointed manner to oh, take yeah. out Hamas and protect as many Palestinian civilian lives as possible, right? Absolutely. Which can be frustrating as a soldier, right? Yeah. You want to go in. It, it, it was, it was uh, before we entered the Gaza Strip, they strictly told us that we are doing everything in our in our power to preserve uh, the Palestinian, you know, Palestinian human life because they are not our enemy. They are not who we are fighting against. We are fighting against uh, Hamas, the the terror group. So uh, I decided, you know, after seeing all these uh, lies against Israel, to stand up. My English wasn't perfect. Still not perfect. Learning uh, edit my editing skills, my uh, my everything. I, I taught myself uh, with God's help how to defend Israel in, in, in the best uh, way that uh, I see it. And that's how I started. I started, you know, during the army to tell the truth as it is from uh, my, my perspective. No, not an organization's perspective or uh, no, no one told me what to say. And this brings up the issue of, di of disproportionality. Every time Israel, you know, it's a cyclical thing. We start, we get these rockets from Hamas and Gaza. We have to go in and take out Hamas. And everybody says, oh, the Israel's using disproportionate <laughs> forces. Dispro and, and I say, yes, it is disproportionate because Israel is trying to take out a terrorist organization while preserving Palestinian lives, and Hamas is trying to kill as many Israeli civilians as possible. That's disproportionate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it's completely disproportionate, right? I, 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 absolutely. I mean, what do they want us to, to do? Do they want us to apologize for, for being strong? Because right. we are no longer the underdog. But we shouldn't apologize for being strong. So what did they expect us to say? Oh, okay, Hamas, we'll give you a, P a, a Iron Dome as well. Right. well. We'll give you a fighter jet if you if you want. Right. And sure, for every Hamas militant we kill, you can kill one Israeli citizen. That would be proportional, right? Yeah, <laughs> but no word about the over uh, 4,000 rockets that were right. uh, launched against Israeli civilians. And not to talk about the, uh, the uh, misfired rockets that landed inside the Gaza Strip and caused uh, uh, loss of life, including Palestinian children. Palestinians, yeah. 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 You can Google this and learn. Okay, so you were so you were an army person. You were filming yourself and, and telling the world your, your story. How, how did you end up going from there to being the media advisor of the prime minister? Wow, I, you know, I, I, I'm very passionate about uh, telling the story of Israel. So, uh, you know, in, in Israel, we have this uh, valley that we call it chutzpah. It's very, very important, especially if you're in the business world uh, and dealing with uh, Israelis to dare. You know, dare to succeed, dare to... Uh, it's like audacity. To, yeah, to something yeah. Like that. So I, you know, it, it was a dream of mine to meet the Prime Minister of Israel back then, Benjamin Netanyahu, and to make a video with him, to ask the uh, this historic leader how to defend Israel, because he was the UN ambas uh, Israel ambassador to the UN, mm -hmm. and he, he, he did a lot for Israel. So I contacted uh, his spokesperson, and I said, hey, I want to make an interview with uh, the prime minister. And who am I? You know, I, I, I just had my pages on social media and they were like responding to me and they said, you know, actually we were thinking about, you know, doing the same thing. We were thinking about uh, making a video uh, with the two of you. So that's amazing. We, yeah. Yeah. So because I had the audacity to contact them and, and ask uh, and I got it. I got it. So I made a video with Netanyahu. I asked him how to defend Israel in the best possible way. And we discussed a lot of these uh, principles that uh, Netanyahu had told me. And uh, long story short, after a few weeks, Netanyahu asked uh, that I join the team. So I got a phone call from, uh, from the spokesperson, uh, from the advisors, and they asked me to join the team. And you can't say no to that. You know, when the prime minister calls 
So, uh, yeah, ever since I've been uh, by his side. Yeah. It reminds me of a, of a proverb that says, do you see it? a man who's diligent in his work? Mehir uh, b'malachato, he, he will stand before kings. And it's like you said, you're passionate. You know, when you're really passionate and you're consistent and you're diligent and you're out there working hard, at the end of the day, somebody's gonna, somebody's gonna yeah. notice. Yeah, just keep being passionate.